Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar all about what's new in version 29.01 of Sage 50 Payroll. My name's Calvin and I'll be one of your hosts and presenters for today's session and as you can see alongside me I am joined by Duncan. Hi everyone. And Duncan will be co-hosting with me throughout the session today. Now Duncan's going to disappear quickly um, but don't worry he will be back very shortly um, but what I'd like to do first is just take you through a little bit of housekeeping. So we use GoToWebinar and we use their webcast feature which is why you'll be watching within a web browser today and on the right hand side you'll see a few icons. Now the one at the top is a microphone and it's in red and it is muted. Now this can't be changed it just means if you do have a microphone that is either a part of your headphones, headset, or built into the computer or a laptop that you're using, this is muted automatically and as goes, can't be changed. It just allows you to have any conversations with either friends or family if you're working from home, or colleagues if you're in the office like we are today. Uh, so you don't need to sit there in silence throughout the session today. Next, if you'd like to ask us a question, you can do so throughout the session today. Just simply click on that question mark icon uh, that's in a little speech bubble there on the right hand side. That will expand the page. You'll then be able to type your question in the white box and hit the blue send button. Your question then appears as a speech bubble in the right hand side grey area with the answer appearing underneath. Now please be aware, we do use the reply to all feature, so you will see other questions and answers coming through in there. And unfortunately, as we use a webcast, there is no availability to download the Q&A at the end today. So what we do recommend is if you'd like to save that for later, copy and paste into a Word document and you can save that for later on if you wish. Now speaking of saving things for later, that brings me nicely to the next icon, which looks like a piece of paper with a folded corner there. When you click on this, you'll be able to download a handout of today's session. Now there's two versions in there, they are both identical, except one is in black and white, which is a more printer friendly version if you wish to print one out. The other one has all of the nice colours and the clickable links if you would like a digital version as well. So we do recommend getting those downloaded if you want to keep them for later, and as I mentioned, they have some really useful links on there that you'll see as we go through today. And lastly, if you'd like to make the presentation full screen, you can do so by clicking on those four arrows. Now please be careful not to hit the exit button, we don't want you to leave too soon, but don't worry if you do accidentally click that, you can simply rejoin the webinar and you'll pick up where you left off. Okay, so that's the housekeeping done and dusted, so let's have a look at what we'll be covering in today's session. So firstly, I'm going to be taking you through some install top tips, so some top tips for a smooth installation. Next. I'll be handing over to Duncan, who's going to have a look at some of the Sage HR integration enhancements. So for those of you using Sage HR online payslips, which of course is a free add-on to Sage 50 Payroll, there are a couple of enhancements to this and Duncan will be taking you through those. Next, he'll be taking you through the email P45 layout as well. It'll then be back to me and we'll be quickly touching upon some NHS pension updates and then having a look at the new Get Help um, feature and this is an improved in product help content. So that covers what we'll be covering today. Now the session is due to last about half an hour um, and don't worry if we do have a run we'll make sure that we've got a little bit of time at the end of the session to ensure we get as many questions answered as possible but be, please be aware there is quite a lot of you today and only the two of us so if there is a slight delay in getting your question answered uh, we do apologize but we're working through them as tirelessly as we possibly can. So thank you for your patience in that regard. Okay, so let's get started. Let's have a look firstly at some install top tips. So the first thing to have a look at is some preparation steps. So we've got a little bit of a checklist here. So the first one on that list is to optimize your data. Now this is a process that we do recommend you run quite regularly when you come to log into your payroll and I'm going to show you the first two in this list as a live demonstration as well. The next one is to check your program directory. Now, you don't need to do anything with this, it's just to ensure you know where the program is installed. So when you come to do the install, it will ask you if there is a version you wish to upgrade and it will give you a specific path. So this is just noting it down, but we'll have a look at that a little bit closer on in the presentation. Next, back up your payroll data. Now this is a process you should be doing on a regular basis, always back up your pro payroll data. And another top tip for me when it comes to your backups, is to ensure those backups are held on either an external hard drive such as a USB stick or um, a cloud-based storage system. 
providing you can access those backups from a completely different computer if you need to. This just makes sure all your data is nice and safe and secure. So for example, if you've got your data, your backups, and your installation all on one laptop, and something goes terribly wrong with that laptop, and you're unable to log in, unfortunately, that's your backups, your data, and your program all inaccessible. However, if you put them on a removable hard drive, or as I mentioned, a cloud-based storage system, should anything happen to that laptop, you can then simply open up a new laptop, install the program, and then restore from your backup that's on your USB stick, or of course, in that cloud-based storage, and you haven't lost any of your data. So it's really key just to keep making sure you're backing up regularly as it makes correcting mistakes, or if anything goes awry, really easy to fix. Next, run the installation as administrator. So if you're not sure if you've got full admin min rights on your PC or computer, then please check with an IT team who will have set this up for you to ensure that you do have the full administration rights in order to be able to install the program and allows for all of the files and folders to be able to be installed in the right places. And lastly, if you're installing on a network, it's always good to ensure that all of your connected installations are all updated as well. This way you have a centralized set of data with multiple installs all connecting to that same set of data. So what I'd like to do now is I'm gonna jump off camera. So when we do any demos, we'll jump off camera and make sure you get the closest look as possible. And we'll have a look at optimizing your data and checking your program directory as well. Okay, so let's bring up our payroll program. So here we are. The first thing we're gonna do is optimize our data. Now this is a process you would normally do when you first open the program. Instead, I'm just gonna to go to file, open company, and you'll see hopefully a familiar window. So this window is what you'll see when you first open the program to be able to log into your company. So we're gonna highlight one of our companies and then we're gonna click optimize. So you'll see here before you log in, you'll be clicking this optimize button. You'll get a little message to say, please wait while payroll optimizes your data. And before I can even finish that sentence, you can see we have a message saying your data has been optimized. So it's a very, very quick process. And what it does is it tidies up the data, reduces the file size, puts all the ones and zeros in it, all its correct places in the background. Once you click OK, you can then log in to your company as normal. If you have multiple companies, like you can see I do here, you will have to do this one by one. But as you saw, it's not a very long process in general. OK, so that's optimizing your data. The next thing I'd like to show you is about checking your program directory. Now to do this, simply click on help and then about, and this will bring up the support homepage. And there's a section in here under program details. So you'll see it here in the top left where you can find your program directory. So it's just here, if I highlight that line for you, and you'll see there is a path underneath. In this instance, my installation is installed in your C drive slash program files x86 slash sage payroll. This can vary, so don't worry if you have a look and it's something slightly different. It's not wrong, it's just where your actual program is installed within that computer. And when we go through a little bit later on in the presentation, you'll see where this becomes important. Now you don't need to do anything with that other than noting it down so you know exactly where it is. And those are the two things I'd like to show you today. So let's pop back to our presentation again. Here we are. And we'll bring our cameras back on also. So the next thing we're gonna have a look at is downloading your update. Now the update was re-released again on Monday. Um, so that is now available to download and install. And you can download and install this from two options. Firstly, it will be available via automatic updates if you have this switched on. So you will receive that prompt on the right hand side. Now this is being released in batches. So if you haven't seen that prompt yet, don't worry, um, it will be coming. And here you can just click install and that will download and install the update for you. Next, you can download it manually. So if you don't wanna wait for that prompt, you can click on the link in this section of the handout and you'll be able to download and install the update manually. So there is a link in the article there, along with all the preparation steps that we've just ran through and any other information you need. So that link is really useful. So if you are hand downloading the handout, it's right there to hand. So that's simply downloading it. Now, when you come to install it and run the installer, you'll see two screens. So you've got the first one where you'll simply be clicking accept license. 
then the next one is where that program directory comes in really useful. So as I mentioned, if you remember, ours was installed on the C drive in program files x86 and forward slash payroll or Sage payroll. So I know that this installer has recognized my version of uh, payroll is installed in this location and it's simply asking if I want to upgrade this particular installation. Now, if that is correct, simply click yes. If it's not correct, click no. Then you can browse to your installation using that um, path that you've noted down from help and about. Once you've done that, click yes again, and then you'll see the green bar scrolling along as the program installs. Once it's installed, a couple of things to check. The first one is when you come to log into your company, you'll get a message to say that the payroll is upgrading your data. So this is upgrading the data to version 29.01. And you can then check your version number, starts with version 29.01. And if I quickly, I'll leave the camera on for this one, but if I quickly jump into my program, go into help and about, so you'll know your version numbers at the top. However, I want you to check your version number in this section. So you go to help and about, you can see your version number is right here. So underneath program details. So this is where the installed version number can be found. So that's just a quick tip from me there as well. Okay, so that's the installing top tips. So that should ensure a nice smooth installation. It's now time to bring Duncan back, uh, who's gonna take us through the Sage HR integration enhancements and have a look at those for you. So it's over to you now, Duncan. Thank you very much, Calvin. Okay, so once you've got our latest update installed and you're on version 29.01, it means you'll be able to start to benefit from some of the, the new features and improvements. And the first one we're going to take a look at is the improved integration between Sage 50 Payroll and Sage HR, which is where you would store your online payslips and P60s. Now, these improvements work both ways, and we're going to start with the process of sending data from payroll to HR. Now, with effect from version 2901, at the point you upload payslips, additional data will now be sent to Sage HR with uh, the employee's first payslip that's uploaded from that version. And the same thing would go for any new starters that you onboard for the first time when you upload their very first payslip. So this will include personal details, such as their address, telephone number, mobile number, and also, if you've recorded them, their bank details. So the bank name, account name, sort code, and account number. And this means that your employee would have visibility of this information in Sage HR, and it would give them a way of easily updating that information, which, as you'll see later, can then be imported back into Sage Payroll. Now, one thing just to note is that if the email address needs to change, you will still need to follow the current process. So you can't just update an email address and import those updates, uh, you would follow a process involving removing the existing profile in HR, amending the email address in payroll, and then re-uploading the payslips and P60s. So I want to show you where all of these data files are found. So um, if I just bring the slides down, and we'll take a look in uh, payroll to start with. So I've already uploaded some payslips from the new version. And if I take a look at the employee record, the personal details that will be uploaded to Sage HR are found here on the personal tab. So I've got an address, a postcode, and I've got some contact details entered. And then if I just click onto the banking tab, I also have a bank account set up for this employee. So these bank details over here will also be sent up to HR. So moving into the HR portal, and I am signed in as an admin at this point, so I can view everyone's records. If I go into that same employee profile, and then navigate onto the personal tab here on the left-hand side, uh, we can see that the address, the postcode, the mobile number has all now been added to the HR record. Now, it's exactly the same for the bank account. So this is the bank account used for payroll. And it just means your employees can check that everything's up to date. And as I say, they can edit this information or they can edit their personal details if they need to inform you about any changes. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that if you don't want your employees to be able to see or edit these details, there are some settings in Sage HR which can easily switch these fields off. So I just want to point out where they are 
uh, you will need to be logged in as an administrator, as I am. And if you click on your admin username at the top and come down to settings, if you then go to the permissions area on the left hand side and then select global, what you've got here are some global permissions which controls what is visible from a user's profile. So if you want to, you can switch off the bank accounts tab, you can switch off the personal tab containing the address and contact details, and you've got the option of switching off a number of other fields to restrict the information that could be viewed or amended in HR. So it's through the settings in the permissions area, and you'll find these on the global permissions. But we're going to leave everything switched on because um, I want to show you in the next demo how an employee can self-serve and change their own details. So um, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to bring Calvin back to the demo and I'm going to get Calvin to share his screen. He's going to play the role of an employee and we'll get him to make some changes to some of his details. So back over to you, Calvin. Thank you so much, Duncan. Okay, so let's be an employee for a second and we'll go ahead and we'll log in to the portal as an employee. So as you can see here, we are at sage.hr where an employee can go to log into their portal. Simply click the sign in button up the top here. Then you'll be entering the employee's email address or the employee will be entering their email address and their password that they have created. Need to remember to click continue to sign in first. Hopefully your employee's internet's slightly quicker than what we have today. So let's put our password in now. And click login. Now this will take us to the employee portal. So this is what an employee will see when they are logging in online. So they'll see they've got three tabs across the left hand side. They've got their dashboard, my profile, and their pay slips and pay 60s. So we're gonna be clicking on my profile and here, we can amend either our bank accounts or personal details, or of course, just view our pay slips and P60. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump into personal and we're gonna change our address. So we've just recently moved house and we want to change our address. Now we can do this ourselves. So let's go ahead and do that. So we were currently at 8 Old Street. We're gonna to go to 88 New Street Avenue. I know we are very creative with our names, as you can tell. And instead of being in South Shields, we're going to hop across the water, if anyone's familiar with the Northeast region, and go to North Shields instead. And of course, we'll then need to change our postcode as well. Once we've done that, we can click Save. And that is our details updated. So as an employee, I've now gone ahead and changed my address. So it's now back to uh, Duncan as the employer, who's now going to show you how to import these. So back over to you, Duncan. Thanks for that, Calvin. Okay, so you're back with the employer now. Um, I'm still logged into my admin account, and I just want to show you in HR that the change that Calvin has just made is visible immediately in the HR system. So if I go to the personal tab for employee one, we count out, we can see now the, the new address details that have been entered and saved. Uh, but what we do need to do is to update these information in payroll. And um, this is something you can do using the import employee updates option. So let's just jump back into payroll. And if you take a look at your payroll tasks, second one in the list after you set your process date is to import employee data. Now you can also see this task if you're on the payroll process map. So we recommend you running at the start of a pay run. So if I run that now, um, first of all, it will recommend that I take a backup, but let's assume I already have an up-to-date backup of my data. So I'm just going to continue without taking the backup now. And then it will do a check with HR to see if there are any new starters created in HR, any employees that have been terminated, or in this case, any updates to the personal or banking details. So as you can see there, we have one employee update to import. And if we click on that, It'll then show us the employee, just employee one in this example, who has both personal details and bank details stored in HR. And we might want to see what's changing. So we can click on the view more link by clicking on these two arrows. And what I can see here is that the address lines have changed as well as the postcode. 
when everything else is remaining the same. Now, if you need to, if there's any formatting errors, any spelling errors, you can click into the information that you're about to import and make any slight adjustments to it. Uh, but we're happy with the details provided by our employees. So we're just going to cancel out of this screen, select the employee you want to import, and then we can import those changes. So I'm going to click yes to continue. And it tells me it's updating the selected record. And we then have one record updated successfully. And cancel out of this screen and we can see that everything is now up to date. And just to show you, if I go back into the employee record, this is now in sync with Sage HR with that new address and postcode provided by our employee. So those are the enhancements to the Sage HR integration. So you'll be using this if you have our online payslips and P60s, unless you're an accountant using Online Bureau. If you're with Online Bureau, you'll remain with your current online portal. As you've just seen there, the import employee data step, it's right at the start of your pay run that we recommend that you run that. And if there are updates to import, you'll be able to view the details, make any changes as required. And if you're happy with the information, you can tick the box and you can go ahead and import it. And you can read more about this change by following the link on the screen. So from Sage HR, payslips and P60s to another form of electronic document. And uh, this time I'm going to talk briefly about emailing P45s. Now, just to be clear, this is an email option. It won't be uploading them to HR. That doesn't currently support P45s, but we've had a lot of feedback asking if we can create some layouts with all of the email settings entered to make it that bit easier to email a P45 to a lever. So that is exactly what we've done in the latest version. We've added a couple of P45 layouts and you'll find these in the report browser. So in the main report section, one of them is configured to use with Microsoft Outlook and the other one is configured to use with SMTP or webmail settings. So we're going to show you how to use this. Pretty straightforward. It's not in the lever wizard itself, but you will still need to run that to enter the leaving date. And then um, we're going to create an email P45 and we're going to send it to our lever. So I have one employee that's just been paid for the last time. And because we're going to be emailing them a P45, we do need to enter some electronic document settings. So to do this, just go into the employee record, go onto the analysis tab here at the top, and then under electronic documents, just tick the box to send via email, and then you enter the date confirmed. I'm just going to enter today's date. And then we strongly recommend that you also create a password and let the employee know what that password is, as they will need that in order to access their document. Now, once these settings are entered, and you might already have them entered, if you've previously emailed payslips or P60s, you'll be able to run the lever wizard and then uh, use the new email P45 layouts. So let's do that now. I'm just going to go to my employee tasks and then into lever. We're going to record the leaving date for this employee. So it was actually the end of last month. And then instead of printing the P45 or previewing it from here, I'm just going to go ahead and finish the lever wizard. And that will have recorded the leave date and set the current status to lever. What I can then do is I can go into reports for this particular employee. And if you've processed more than one lever, you'll be able to go into reports and run this report for multiple employees at the same time. Now I've added one of them to my favorites. So this is the one for use with Microsoft Outlook, but you'll find them within the employee folder. And if you scroll down to the P's, it's P45 for Outlook or SMTP. You can preview it first if you want to, or if you want to print your own copy. And then uh, I'm just going to go straight to the email option by clicking the email output at the top. And that's going to create an email. And because it's the Outlook layout, it's going to drop that into my drafts folder. So if I bring my Out Outlook up, you can see the email is sitting here in drafts. Uh, we can open that up on screen. 
So this is what we will send to our employee. And when they receive it, they can open the attachment, entering the password that you set for them, and they can then view and print their own P45. So all I would do from this point is go ahead and send it, and that will be winging its way to our employee. So that's your new email P45 layouts. And with that, we're going to get Calvin back on and he's going to run you through a couple of other new features in the latest version. So uh, back over to you, Calvin. Thank you so much, Duncan. OK, so let's bring back our screen and we'll go through a couple of the final changes, not forgetting the camera, of course. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is some of the NHS pension changes. Now, I appreciate this won't be relevant to a lot of people in the session today, so I will make it as brief, uh, but as detailed as I possibly can. Um, so there has been some changes. I'm sure any of you who are running or processing NHS pensions will have been aware that in May uh, or June, I, can, I can't remember which month it was, but there was an announcement by HMRC that there were some changes to the NHS pension tiers that were to be backdated and applied retrospectively from the 1st of April 2023. Now, these updated tiers have now been uh, implemented in the NHS pension module as part of this update. And there is now a report that can be run to find out any employees that may have been processed on the incorrect tiers as well. So they can then be reprocessed and actioned correctly. So there is an option now. So you can download that report. And of course, the new updated tiers have been applied to the NHS pension module as part of this update. Now, for more information on that, um, for anyone who does do NHS pensions that are in today's session, there is a link on this handout that will give you full details of how to go about uh, actioning these as well. So please do check that out. So the next thing we're going to have a look at and the final thing is our get help option. Now, this is a new and improved in product support uh, option for you all. Now, this is where you can access our wonderful help center or a version of it uh, directly from within Sage 50 payroll program. And you can do that by a couple of options. You can click on any of the help icons. We've got them all screenshot on the left hand side there. Um, so there's the little green on the banner for pension module windows and there's the help icon at the top of the employee list. And of course, the little green buttons as well. Or alternatively, as a quicker way of doing it, simply press F1 on your keyboard. Now, for those of you using laptops, you may have to dual press uh, the FN key and then F1. Or if you've got a regular keyboard, then you would be pressing the F1 key on there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna jump off camera again. We're gonna jump in the program and I'll show you how this get help option works um, and what the improvements are with it as well. So here we are back in our Sage 50 payroll program. Now, as you can see, we're just on our main screen. So we've just got our employee list on screen. Now, if I need support from this page, all I need to do is click on the help icon at the top. Now, I haven't pressed F1 on my keyboard because you can't see me doing that, um, but you can see me clicking on the F1 on the help icon. So just remember you can press F1 on your keyboard. And this brings up this window. Now this window can be moved about to position it uh, on another monitor if you've got dual monitors or at a more convenient location. And if you need a bigger, wider view, you can expand it as well. Now in here, you have the availability to search for any specific questions. So I know often when a session has ended, questions tend to come to you too late, it happens to me all of the time. So if that happens, press F1 on your keyboard in your program, type your question in the search bar, and all the relevant guides to that question will appear. Alternatively, you have them all sectioned into subjects such as install your software. So you can find your download link here as well. Workplace pensions, online services, so Sage HR, and of course, processing your payroll. Multiple pages can be found at the bottom. And if we keep going down, you'll see here you can join us for our Sage C and ask the Sage community as well. Um, so head on over there. You can engage in discussions with other users if you wish to. and you also have the contact options. Now this will be directing you to either a web chat or of course the phone number. So if you do need extra support or you are struggling with something um, or something hasn't gone quite right, you can contact the support options here all within the program. Remember, all you're doing is pressing F1 or clicking one button. What you also have access to is a help menu across the top. So if you click on this, which we will do, 
you'll see there we've got our home, we've got browsing, all the help topics, so, you know, all the available topics there. Alternatively, we do run webinars weekly, so we'll be um, back to our regular scheduling next week. So you can click on this link. So if we do that now, you'll see here we have our schedule of webinars. So we've got another watch new session tomorrow. Then we've got a quick guide to user management next week, along with get your payroll done. Uh, mastering mistakes so there's a lot of webinars up and coming uh, and we do regularly update this as well and you can now access those directly from in your program you also of course have the support options and if you want to give us a little bit of feedback please feel free to do so via this link here so that's the get help option now it doesn't actually end there because the other thing i'm going to show you about it so if we open up an employee record and then let's click the absence tab You'll see we have our little help icon here. And again, you can press F1 on your keyboard. So if we click on that, we get our window up here once more, but this time you may notice something different. You can still search via the top link, or there are guides that are specifically related now. So rather than giving you all those different subjects, they're specifically related to employee absences. So what the program now does is it recognizes where you are in the software itself, in order to be able to give you the relevant help that you need. Now you still have the search option because everyone needs help on slightly different things, so it might not cover everything, um, but the options are there with the most popular, and of course you still have the contact support options. So it does recognize where you are in the program in order to give you the support you need. So it's a great little feature um, and it's an easy way to access help. So this has been greatly improved in version 2901. Okay, so it's back to the presentation because we have overrun a little bit. We've got a couple of minutes there. Um, so I'd just like to run you through some further support. Please feel free to keep getting questions in. Duncan is tirelessly answering them as I speak today. Um, so further support we have available. We still have our help center on the website. Don't remember, don't forget, you can press F1. So again, here you can search our knowledge base, go through all the support guides, access webinars, videos, and of course, to get in touch options. Uh, but I do recommend if you want to use the help center, press F1. And last but certainly not least, and possibly my personal favorite, is Sage University. So if you want to expand your Sage payroll learning or Sage software learning, if you have Sage 50 accounts, for example, um, you can go to sageu.com. Register for free and then access all the e-learning, certification and bite-sized learning that is available through there, which can be done at your own time and in your own pace as well. So it's a really, really good resource. And I know time is always of the essence when it comes to running payroll, but I do highly recommend if you do get a spare minute, check out Sage University and have a look at some of the wonderful courses that are on there. So that does bring us to the end. We will stick around for a few more minutes to make sure we get as many questions answered as possible. So I'll pop back when we've done that and I have to end it. Either we've run out of time or we've got all the questions answered. Um, if you are leaving us at this stage, thank you so much for attending today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you will be directed to a very short feedback survey when you come to leave the session or the session ends. And it means a great deal to both myself and Duncan if you can just take a little bit of time to fill that in. We can't make improvements, we can't make changes um, without your feedback. So I really do um, appreciate you taking that time to let us know. Uh, we really read it quite religiously and we've already made a few changes, including these cameras, um, based on the feedback that you've given us. So thank you in advance. So I'm gonna jump off now, pop on mute, help out Dunk with any questions. Once we've either got them all answered or we run out of time, I'll pop back to say goodbye. Thank you. Okay, so we have reached the end of the session and I can see we managed to get the majority of questions answered. I think it was one that may have left before we managed to get the answers to them. But however, we managed to get through all of the questions. So thank you so much uh, for those of you who've stuck around. Don't forget as well, um, you will receive a recording of today's session um, about an hour after we close the session. So do look out for that email. All that's left for me to say is thank you so much again. I hope you're all looking after yourselves out there and staying safe, of course. And um, I wish you all the best and hopefully we'll see you on any webinar in the short term future. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone.